In the workshop, a simple repair to a steam fitting. A short while back, I made a video featuring this engine. It's a very nicely made example of a Stuart Models number eight. During the making of the video, as I tightened up the tap on the steam chest, the specially made pipe that supported the tap broke. And that was because the hole in the center of the fitting was too big and the thread was very weak. So as I tightened it up, it just snapped off. Luckily though, I didn't tighten it up until the end of the review. So there was plenty of time to show the engine running on compressed air and it runs okay. The engine arrived in the packaging partly dismantled for shipping to the USA. In this video, I'm going to show how I repaired the fitting. On screen at the moment is the broken fitting. The top part is just a union nut that fastens the tap to the fitting. And you can clearly see that the hole in the fitting is far too big for the thread diameter. So what size thread is this? To confirm the thread size, I used a 3 16 by 32 threads per inch tap by carefully screwing the tap into the steam inlet flange. And now it's over to the lathe for a bit of plain turning. This is my Boxford lathe, which is great for smaller jobs. The lathe tool that I'm using is a carbide tip tool. This cutting tool's done a lot of work and I should have really changed the tip, but it will be okay for this. With a piece of brass bar in the chuck, I'm reducing part of the diameter down to 3 16 of an inch. I've mentioned many times in these videos that I am not an engineer. And here is a good example of not being an engineer. Maybe I'm wrong, but I would think a proper engineer would initially cut the piece of metal like this, then adjust the micrometer to the diameter of the piece of metal that's already been turned, then calculate the difference between the current diameter of the work and the finished diameter of the work required, then turn the piece of brass to the finished diameter by turning the graduated dial on the cross slide to the correct position. I could do it that way, but generally speaking, I'm not very good at maths, so we'll probably get the calculations wrong and turn it the wrong size. I use a different method, but it all turns out okay in the end. I generally work by feel on most of the things that I do. And as you can see, the micrometer fits on the work perfectly. The next part of the job is to thread the piece of brass, 3 16 by 32 threads per inch. And for this, I'm using a die holder fitted to my tailstock adapter. A while back I made a complete video showing details about this adapter. And why did I make this? Well, it saves time. I only have three tailstock die holders. So this adapter allows me to use standard die holders to hold the dies. And as I have about 10 of these now, fully loaded with the popular die sizes that I use, it makes thread cutting so much quicker. As you can see, I'm not thread cutting at the moment. I'm drilling the hole down the center of the fitting. First of all, with a center drill, to make sure the hole's in the center. And here I'm using a small twist drill that's the right size to go down the center, leaving sufficient metal to make the thread strong. The next part of the job is to turn the external diameter to the same diameter as the hole in the union nut. And the diameter of this part of the fitting needs to be the right size to fit inside the threaded part of the union nut. I don't need to use the micrometer for this job. I'm using the union nut as a gauge. The union nut fits perfectly on the shaft, not too tight and not too slack. And here I'm turning down the larger diameter of the piece of brass to fit inside the threaded part of the union nut. I made a mistake when I was making this component. I didn't leave enough of the brass sticking out of the chuck. So after I threaded the component, I had to move the part out a little bit. This is definitely not good practice and it's not the way to do it. But we all make mistakes, said the hedgehog climbing off the hairbrush. And besides, this isn't a precision part in any shape, way or form. As long as the shaft where the union nut slides on and the end part, which goes inside the threaded part of the union nut, are concentric, then there's no problem at all. You've just been watching me parting off the work and I would normally put a small twist drill in the end to stop it dropping into the chip tray. To finish the job, I need to turn the end of the fitting into a cone, which will fit on the steam inlet of the tap and be perfectly steam tight. So the angle of this is very important. So how do you make the angle of the end of the fitting match the angle of the internal part of the steam taps inlet? There are different ways to do this. The easiest way to do it, I suppose, is to get a lathe tool that's at the right angle in the first place. Or maybe use a piece of tool steel and grind it to the right angle. Or set the compound slide to the correct angle and use the handle on the end of the compound slide. But by far the quickest method for me was to use my standard 45 degree V tool. 
fit a commercial coned union into the chuck, then rotate the tool holder on the top of the top slide until I got the angle correct. Here's the fitting with the tap attached and it screws in and out of the flange perfectly. And it's an improvement on the first fitting that just broke off. I thought it would be a good idea to use a copper washer between the fitting and the flange, so here I fitted one. After making sure everything fitted OK, I removed the tap. I'm repacking the engine very carefully into its original box, which in turn fits inside another box. I definitely would like it to survive the journey from here to the USA. That's about it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.